Duncan, one of the main concerns I've seen with people who are thinking about a raw food diet for their pets is they're kind of scared that the food's full of bacteria that's going to be harmful to their animals. Um, you're a vet. <laughs> what do you think about that? Um, look, I think raw food diets get a bit of bad press, to be honest. Like, the, there are pathogens associated with that kind of food, as well as others. Um, but the pathogens, like bacteria in there, can also be good. There's a difference between good and bad bacteria. Dogs and cats, their digestive systems are different to us. Their stomach is more acidic and their gastrointestinal tract is shorter. So they've got less time for pathogens to replicate, as well as muscle meat protein to ferment. We've got to apply the germ theory different to them as well as us. But I would say that if the animal's immunocompromised, like on you know certain medications, like they're on chemotherapy or something, you've got to be worried about that bacterial load as well. But for the majority of dogs and cats, I think it's great. Why do you think people think that about raw food diets? So there's that they are bad. Uh, I think they're just more associated with like specific pathogens like Salmonella and E. coli, kind of the biggest ones. Um, but they are actually ubiquitous in the environment. They're yep. actually everywhere. Your dog's going to go for a walk out in the environment and stuff and probably lick or pick things up worse than what's in the food. They need to get bacteria from everywhere. Like yep. We also need bacteria because it's good for our microbiomes, the, like our gut flora. So as long as you're adding prebiotics and probiotics to certain foods and things, as well as bringing in beneficial bacteria, um, you actually want to have that diversity mm. of bacteria in your gut. Yeah. So the more you have and the more diverse your gut is, they're shown with human studies that it's actually more beneficial for our immune system. Yeah. I suppose you don't want to take a dog from like a kibble or dry food straight across to a raw food diet, do you? No, you want to make sure that you have that like transitioning period for, for anything, like if you're changing any kind of diet. Um, because if you give them something straight away, one, their immune system's not used to it, and two, their gut's not used to it. So you can get things like, you know, vomiting and diarrhea and stuff if you, if you introduce any kind of food straight away. So you want to try and make sure that you give it slowly. So over seven to 28 days, you're just giving piece by piece. Some, you know, pet foods kind of add in preservatives that aren't good and other bits and pieces. So you want to be trusting the company as to having human grade quality, make sure that. And two, it's the same if you're handling any kind of raw meat and stuff at home in the kitchen. You want to make sure that everything's clean. So you're washing everything properly, washing your hands and like keeping stuff in the fridge. And also you want to watch out for expiry dates. So make sure that food isn't expired before you get it. What's the best way to keep it fresh? I like the method of freezing because it stops the bacteria from replicating. And it also means that like you're not adding any preservatives. So you get all these foods that like you know, the shelf life's quite long, even if they're in the fridge, like, it should only last a few days. Otherwise, if they've got pres preservatives in it, it's gonna affect the nutrient profile. Um, whereas freezing is literally means that it's still fresh and you just defrost it to your dog. That's so. perfect, yeah. So if you wanna find out more about the benefits of a raw food diet, check out the Big Dog website. Should we go find Jess? Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> sort of running that way. Yeah. <laughs>